one of the things that I've been lucky enough to be able to do is to cook. Um, it's my favorite thing to do and I get to call it my job. So how lucky am I? Um, and with that, I get to express myself who I am. And I'm Bangladeshi and I'm British and I always like to whack the two together. So I'm gonna show you how I make my carrot cake pakoras. Okay, so to make these carrot cake pakoras, we've got some grated carrots, we've got some raisins, we've got some chopped nuts, some sugar, some flour, some salt, some mixed spice, um, and some baking powder, and then we've got some eggs, and we're going to put this thing together. First, I'm gonna mix this lot up. Okay, so now that's mixed, I'm gonna add the sugar. I'm gonna add the flour. And then we're gonna add our salt, our baking powder, and our mixed spice. Looks like a carrot cake. Well, it is. Once it's all mixed up and really well combined, I'm gonna throw in the eggs and you want to mix this till you have a mixture that holds itself see so that looks see that looks like a carrot cake right what you want is a mixture that kind of holds itself together like a pakora because yes this is carrot cake but we are gonna deep fry this oh yeah my carrot cake pakora mix is ready to go. I've got a little ice cream scoop to scoop it out. And then I've got my oil heating up in a pan. And then of course a plate lined with some kitchen paper. So we are ready to go from here to there to there. Yes. So you leave them, fry, fry, fry. Just turn the extractor fan off. Leave them to fry as you would pakoras. And look, I've broken into one just to show you, but look at the cakiness of that and the raisins have hydrated and it's basically deep fried cake yep thank me later so that's it they're fried i've dusted them with a little bit of icing sugar but you can't have carrot cake without some sort of frosting so i've made a cream cheese maple frosting to go with it so yeah that's deep fried cake cream cheese maple frosting in pakora form. Okay, so watch what happens when I make carrot cake pakoras. Watch this. Guys! Who wants carrot cake pakoras? Oh, I smell that. <laughs> hey. I something good. Go on, go on. <laughs> go on. Mm. Mm. Those are boys. the noises. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good one. Oh, that's too much. Is that yummy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shall I leave this with you guys? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. okay. I remember as a kid, my dad would really kind of drum it into us, really, really push and say, Look, you're Bangladeshi and you need to know where you're from. and We'd take trips to Bangladesh and spend months out there and we had to know our grandparents' names off by heart and the village we lived in. And at the time, I just thought, well, this is just mad. Like, why? I live in England. I'm British. It's as simple as that. I don't need to know who I am. I don't need to know where I'm from. Um, and there's wisdom in that. And dare I say it, my dad was right. You know, now I didn't understand it as a child or as a young adult, but now as a 35 year old with teenagers I totally understand the wisdom behind knowing where you're from your history who you are and being Asian was something that didn't really bother me when I was growing up because I grew up I grew up around Bangladeshi so it wasn't something I even thought about and then I went out into the world of college and work and realized oh I'm a little bit different and now at 35 working in the television industry, writing cookbooks. Um, 
I understand now why my dad said that I have to understand where I'm from because now I stand out. Now we stand out. Now everything about me feels different. But am I proud of the differences? 100% proud of the differences because they make me who I am. And it means that I have something different to give. And would I ever change anything? Ask my teenage self, I'd have changed everything. Ask me now, I wouldn't have it any other way. I couldn't be more proud.